Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to the session. I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to have Marna today uh, discussing this uh, topic. And uh, Marna, the stage is all yours now. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Anna. And, I, and I'm really happy to be at GSE. Of course, I would have been even happier to, to be and seeing you in person, but I guess we'll have to you know, work out with this. But we're being recorded, which is great, so that people can go back and review this if you want over time. So I'm gonna be giving two presentations today on the ZOS installation strategy. And the first one I wanna talk about is how to install a product using the new installation strategy. But let me introduce you if you don't know who I am. My name is Marna Wally and I work in ZOS installation and upgrade. Upgrade is the new term for software migration now that we're being using for ZOS. And I work in Poughkeepsie, New York. And of course, as you can see, I'm at my house. I've been here since March 13th. And my email is on the cover if you have any questions at all about installation. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about product installation, which is real exciting. So I wanted to refer you to a preview announcement that we did back in February. And what we said in this preview announcement is that we have all gotten together within the industry, um, software vendors and IBM, everybody, and we're aligning into a common installation strategy for program products on the ZOS platform. But it's actually bigger than the just product installation, and I'll show you that in a second. But what we did is we followed upon that with the ZOS 2.4 preview announcement, which we did way back in February. And we said that we are going to provide server pack within this new ZOSMF portable software instance format. And this portable software instance format is going to be used to install products that you get from IBM and that the very first product set or SREL that we're going to do the conversion of is Kix. Okay, so that's the announcement that we made. Subsequently, we did then deliver the Kix one. And then if you see at the bottom of this chart here, we've actually moved on to IMS and DB2 as well. So today within IBM, we have Kix, IMS and DB2 all available in the traditional server pack, which you can install with ISPF, or the new format for server pack is the portable software instance format, and you consume that deliverable using ZOSMF software management. So that's what this presentation is about, how to consume this new product deliverable in a portable software instance using ZOSMF. So of course, I'm going to mention here, are you ready for this, right? So when I ask you, are you ready? Does that mean you already have ZOSMF up and running on your system? which you really should. We've been talking about this for a very long time. So we really want you to have ZOSMF up and running on your system so that you can take these products from IBM and install them. And again, remember today, we have the availability of Kix IMS and DB2 to do that. We do not have ZOS available today in a portable software instance, but you can kind of guess we're working on it really hard right now. So what I want to talk about in this presentation is very high level overview of software management, a little bit more about the installation strategy that IBM and the leading software vendors have been working on. It all is based in something called a software instance. So very quickly, I want to go through a, what a software instance is and then what also a portable software instance is also because that's how as vendors, software vendors, we deliver software to our clients with a portable software instance. We'll talk about how you might be able to acquire those portable software instances from a software provider. And then the really meaty part of this presentation is stepping through ZOSMF software management, how to install that portable software instance, and then even how to launch into the ZOSMF workflows, which is where you will do the configuration and the installation verification of the software in the workflows portion of ZOSMF. And then I believe we'll have just a couple of minutes at the end, but I did want to cover over some other functions that we had within ZOSMF software management that you can do after you've got the product installed. Okay, so what is software management? So software management is a plugin capability within ZOSMF. Hopefully you're all using it, you have it today. And software management is uh, concerning itself with the installation management reporting 
deployment of software. So you can do a lot of information within ZOSMF software management to manipulate or look at or compare these products that you would have installed on your system. Okay, so I put in bold here on this slide some of the things that you can do in software management that are it's very hard to do today otherwise. So I get a lot of questions about, you know, why should I use software management? I know how to use SP very well. Uh, what's the benefits of using software management? Well, I do want to mention just a couple that are in bold because this is distinct advantages you have in using ZOSMF. So using software management, you can help identify software products that are coming upon their end of service date. And you can do that across your enterprise very quickly, very easily, okay? And this is uh, something that other vendors have participated in. So you could look at your entire enterprise software stack to see if end of service is approaching for your products. Today, it is very hard to do this. It's very manual to do this. So this is a great thing. And if for no other reason that you use it besides the end of service date, you've already got an advantage to using it. We also have the capability within software management to validate the S&P structure and the content of a software instance. Meaning that if you have a DDDEF in your S&P E zone and it points to a data set and that data set doesn't exist on the volume that we think it exists on because the DDDEF is pointing it to it, we can do validation of that sort. And that's been actually kind of an interesting thing. We've run these kind of reports within our own systems in Poughkeepsie. And we found some interesting things that we had to clean up. So this is also very hard to do unless you have ZOSMF software management. And the third one I wanna talk about very briefly here is if you're trying to look for a specific fix across your entire enterprise, across your entire set of global zones, you would have to manually go into each one of those CSIs and do the query into that CSI if you have a PTF particularly installed. What you can do in software management is you can run that with just one couple of clicks in a query and it'll come back and tell you across your entire enterprise what you have a fix on. So I remember a while ago we had a red alert, uh, maybe there was a bad PE problem and people immediately wanted to know if they had the bad P PTF on installed anywhere across their enterprise. That's a perfect use case of using this because I could quickly ascertain across my entire enterprise whether I had that red alert PE install. Okay, so what's the installation strategy? Well, it's not the IBM installation strategy. I want to stress that. It's not IBM uh, putting an installation strategy onto the entire marketplace, right? This is a coming together of IBM and the leading software vendors. And we're talking about, we've got to make it easier for users, right? Every kind of vendors seem to have their own installation type, like IBM had a server pack, server pack had a dialogue. Dialogues, you know, you had to have specific skills in order to use the server pack dialogue. And this is exactly what we're talking about. We really had to come together. Some vendors, and we know this, do not want to be SMP packaged, and that is totally fine. As IBM, we have products that we don't want to SMP package, but we force it into SMP and it doesn't look quite right. So even at this point in time also, we wanted to make sure that the installation strategy could handle both SMP or non SMP or even a mixture of both. Okay, so this packaging format that we came up with, this portable software instance, that's what we call it, this packaging deliverable type from the software to the users, made it easier so that everybody could have the same delivery and packaging. So we can do packaging similarly. Um, we can then give it to our clients, the clients can consume it in the same format, and that we can also do things like uh, configure it consistently within ZOSMF workflows, and we can continue to do deployment afterwards from, let's say, a development to system to a test system to a production system. So those deployment operations can also be done similarly with this same uh, packaging format that we've come up with. We also wanted to look at servicing. So we wanted to make it easier for users to service these products that we have installed with software instances. And so we will talk briefly in the next session about ZOSMF software upgrade. And that was the ability to use a browser to put on a PTF onto a software instance. Not everybody is totally familiar with using batch jobs. So that's what this solution is for. 
And also, if we're talking about installation, we need to talk a little bit about, you know, and not installing, you know, end of service, like I mentioned before. And so the ZOSMF software management uh, installation strategy also encompasses the end of service infrastructure that we're going to need. So in this way, it starts all the way from soup to nuts, right? It gets you from the packaging of the software all the way through to the end of service of the software. So that's the installation strategy in, in one quick slide. All right, so let's start launching into how we're gonna actually use this and how you're gonna install the product because that's what this is really about. So you're gonna be using ZOSMF, of course, and that's why we've been encouraging ZOSMF for such a long time. As you know, ZOS 2.3 is the lowest service supported ZOS level that we have today. And on ZOS 2.3, we have automatically started ZOSMF. So we are relying upon every 2.3 system that is out in the world to have somewhere ZOSMF capabilities uh, available to it. Okay. So on this particular slide, I wanted to bring your attention here to three icons that you'll see on the desktop for ZOSMF, workflows, software management, and software update. These are the three pieces that are coming together to help with the installation strategy. Today, I'm just gonna mostly talk about software management and a little bit about workflows because that's about the product install capability. As I'd mentioned before, software update, we're gonna talk about in the next session, and that will be how to put fixes on. Okay, so if I look and I launch into software management, you can see I have a list of details or list of items that software management can do. So I have software instances, portable software instances. I can look at products. I can do deployments. Deployments means copying software from one location to another. I can look at the kind of categories of software I have and then also do some general settings. So let's move right into the software management, the main panel. Let's look at the very top item, which is a software instance. So what is a software instance? Okay, no, a software instance is the most basic building block that we have for the installation strategy. So here's two examples. I really do like this slide because it would give you a little inner look at what a software instance is. So a software instance can either be SMP installed products or non SMP installed products. It really doesn't matter. It is just a collection of data sets that you can find those data sets. So they have to have a name and you have to tell them where they are. And then you have to be able to call that software instance a title that you want to call it. So it's really just as easy as pointing to some data sets, grouping them together and giving that group a name. Okay, that's basically what a software instance is, very easy. So you can see on the left here that we have a pre-installed SMP product. We've got Global Zone, Target, DLib Zones. We've got Target Libraries, we have DLibs. And then we might also have on the left-hand side here some non-SMP managed data sets that might be associated with it. Perhaps it's configuration, perhaps it's not configuration, perhaps there's user exits or something that goes along with that particular software instance. So here's an example on the left of a pre-installed product that is packaged with SMP that is a combination of SMP and non-SMP put together into one group that we, is called the software instance. And let's look at the other side of the chart here. On the right hand side, this is a software instance where it's simply a collection of data sets that I've pointed it to and given it a name. So really, these are two perfectly valid instances of software instance. Um, software instance, like I said, is the most basic unit. It is the deployable unit that we'll use within the installation strategy. And the data sets can be sequential. They can be PDS, PDSE, VSAM, ZFS. Uh, they could even be HFS if you wanted them to. Although if I'm thinking about a software upgrade, um, I wouldn't encourage you to have HFS data sets, but if you still had them, you could absolutely put them in a software instance. If you can find them, you can name them. Uh, you can put them in a software instance. So just a really quick chart. I also like this chart as well because it will give many examples of software instances. But what I like about this chart is it distinguishes between at the top here, you'll see here's ZOS 2.3 and another version or another instance of ZOS 2.3. And they're both software instances on their own right. But if you look, they're at different service levels. 
So when you think about a software instance, you can have a software instance of the same product, but just at that instance being a different service level. And this works out really well with the way software is maintained today, because a lot of users I know have, you know, flip-flop systems. They have, you know, the one that they're working on next and the one that's currently running. And so you'll have two versions, like an A and a B, and you'll just flip-flop between which one is active. And software instances fit into that known uh, service or that known process that you do in your own shop today very well like that. So here, you know, here's an example of three levels of ZOS 2.3, a couple different levels of DB2. Here's some other products on the bottom right-hand corner, which you know, maybe aren't even IBM products. Um, they might be SP installed, they may not be SP installed. So just get in your mind the, the collecting of these software instances and how they'll move. All right, that's a software instance. What's a portable software instance? All right, so you've got a software instance and it looks great, right? It might even have you know, some VSAM data sets, maybe some CSIs, might have some ZFS file systems, but those things are not usually very shippable to a client. We need to get them kind of in a archived format so that we can transfer it to the, the client in, in a package, right? So what we do is we created a portable software instance and a portable software instance is just the archive file set that came from a software instance and it is shipped, be able to be shipped to you. So it's a movable thing that makes it a little easier for us to move. So as software vendors, we can send it to clients a little bit easier. So in this picture here, you'll see I had a software instance on the left, and when I made it a portable software instance, so the terminology that we use is we export the software instance into a portable software instance. You can see here uh, that we've got some attribute files associated with it, and then you can see all the data sets are in a PAX format. And this should look really similar to you because if you ever opened up a server pack, uh, and when we sent it to you, it was Jim zipped up in this same sort of a format. So this should be very familiar with you to you. So there's nothing really new or different going on here. Uh, it's just that we've taken the software instance and put it into a portable software instance format using the utilities that we've known and loved for years and years and years. Okay, but we're now calling that portable software instance. So, whoop, sorry about that. Okay, so we needed to have a portable software instance, like I said before, so that we can send it to you. But what you'll need to do on your own system is you'll have to acquire that portable software instance and make it known or stage it into ZOSMF. So what I'm gonna do in this presentation is in the little pink bubbles that we have at the bottom, I'm gonna compare it to a server pack. OK, so that you can see if you've ever done a server pack before in your life that the ZOSMF software management and the software instance installation method is very similar to a server pack. So you should really feel comfortable moving from the ISPF format of a server pack into a ZOSMF installation method. OK, very similar. So I'm going to point out the similarities and there are a lot of similarities. So the first thing you need to do in ZOSMF software management is you need to introduce the portable software instance to your system. To do that, you're going to go in ZOSMF and you're going to say add on the portable software instance. And then you have three locations that you can add it from. Have you already got it on your ZOS Unix directory? If that case, you pick the first one. Do you have it downloaded onto your workstation? That's the second one. And then the third option is from a download server. This is probably the most popular option for most customers. And what that means is that for the IBM vendor, you will be pulling it from our Boulder uh, production site and directly over the internet, pulling it into your local system. So that all three of these options is a little bit like the server pack receive process. OK, but we call it here an add of a portable software instance. So everything that you could do in the server pack ISPF dialogs, you can do here. It's just it has a little bit of a different name. Liken it in your mind to a receive. So just one more slide a little bit. If you're going to go direct uh, download uh, from the IBM host, let's say in Boulder, Colorado, onto your own system, which is a very popular option we know, we have to provide you server XML just like we did in server pack. So in server XML, we can see here on the right that you would cut and paste that from the information that we give you in shop Z. Okay. 
Now I am seeing that I have some chat. So let me just take a little bit of uh, time here. Look at the chat. Um, see if there's any questions. I'm totally losing people. I have one global CSI with all IBM products in the global. Then for each product, I have independent zones and target DLIs. Is this supported? Absolutely. We'll get to that in a little bit, Juan. You'll see how you can fit that existing environment today into your system with this format that we have. Uh, Chris asks, when you talk about ZFS data sets, are you referring to the complete ZFS file system that is then mounted to a specific location in an existing ZFS file hierarchy? Or is it just a collection of directories and file that will be placed? I'm talking about the data set here. So I'm talking about the ZFS file system. I'm talking about the VSAM linear data set here. Okay, so it's the whole thing. All right, so let's keep moving. I'm not sure why it flucks back a little bit. Okay, so now you've got the portable software instance introduced onto your system, onto your ZOSMF system. Doesn't really matter where the vendor was, any vendor that packages with a portable software instance, and we do have vendors that do that as well. Like I said, IBM does it for Kix, DB2, and IMS today. Does not today do it for ZOS, but you know we're working on it. So let's say you've gone to the vendor location, you've put in the server XML, you've transferred onto your system, you've got it introduced in ZOSMF, so ZOSMF knows it's got a portable software instance. What do you do with it? You deploy it. Okay, that's the word for the installation of it is deploy. So you would go into deploy of software management. And let's look at kind of an overview of what we've got here. So let's say I have a sysplex, two systems in the sysplex, and I've chosen to run ZOSMF on system two. Okay, so we call that our primary ZOSMF. I log on to that ZOSMF, and I have an HTTPS connection to system two's ZOSMF. I'm logged onto that primary and I've done the acquisition from the vendor onto my system, onto volumes in that portable software instance that you can see here in green. Now, my goal here is that I want to lay that down somewhere. I want to make it a software instance. So we're going to call that a target software instance. Okay, so I want to take it out of its portable format and I want to put it into, you know, pop it out into its native format, your ZFS, VCM linear data sets. Um, you know, your flat files, your PDS, PDSEs, whatever you have. So I need to get those back down into their normal format, get them unarchived, unzipped, you might think of into that target software instance. So this is the big picture of what we're talking about in this presentation is trying to get it out of the portable software instance format and into the software instance format. But to do that, you're gonna to have to tell us many things because this is highly customizable. You'll be able to tell exactly what the name of the data sets are, what the name of the volumes are, how they're SMS managed, how they're cataloged. Do you wanna use, use a, have a new user cat? All of those options uh, you can tell us all about in the deployment checklist that you can see here. So let me just check on the chat really fast that we're doing okay. I think we're doing okay on the chat, so let me continue on. So this is the deployment checklist, and this is the very high level deployment checklist. And the idea here is that we're going to guide you through these checklists so that you cannot make an error. You can't jump around in the checklist just like you couldn't jump around in the server pack ISPF dialog. This is just like the custom pack installation option that you'd see where you would see those check marks moving you through the installation of a server pack very similar. You'll see these steps going through on the deployment checklist as you go through installing your software instance, or I should rather say deploying your software instance. Okay. So you'll see a lot of the options here. And what I want to do is I want to go kind of quickly through these options, not because they're, they're hard to do, they're rather easy to do, but I just want to give you a feeling on what is capable of doing in the deployment of the software instance and what each one of these steps will do for you. And I also want to point out some of the advantages of using ZOSMF to do the portable software instance install above what IBM had for the server pack ISPF installation, because there's actually more capability that we can see here. All right. So I'm gonna start out at the very top of my deployment checklist. It's gonna say, okay, what do, you, what do you wanna deploy? You can see at the top here that I can deploy a software instance that's already you know, ex, ex, unzipped out. It's already in its you know, regular native format. Or on the right here, I could install a portable software instance. Okay, so for this example, since it's brand new software that I'm talking about that we're gonna install, we'll select a portable software instance. And since I've added it to ZOSMF, I've acquired it and I've received it in, 
I have an awareness of it and those portable software instances are listed here. So I just select which one I wanna install. This is just like selecting in the server pack dialog what uh, order you want to install, same thing. Okay, that was it. That was the easy section of that checklist. So we're gonna move down a little bit more. So the next question is, what's your objective? Okay, where do you want to install this portable software instance? So I'm gonna make the picture a little bit more complicated than I had before. So I had Sysplex A and I was logged on to ZOSMF onto system two. And remember I had my portable software instance here. It had been acquired or, or staged on to my um, Sysplex A system that I had done from uh, my ZOSMF primary. Now remember, I want to deploy that into a target software instance. But the thing that's the capability in ZOSMF that we never had the capability to do in server pack before is I could actually do that onto a remote system. So I'm gonna make the picture a little more complicated here because here we have two more Sysplexes, Sysplex B and Sysplex C. And I could take this green portable software instance that you see here, and I could deploy it all the way out to, let's say, target software instance Y, that's on Sysplex B, or I could deploy it out to target software instance Z, that was on Sysplex C, or I could just keep it in the same Sysplex if I wanted and make it target software instance X. Okay, now later on, I'm going to mention that once you have that target software instance deployed, you can then also deploy it subsequently to other remote systems as well. So let's say I had deployed it to target software instance Y on Sysplex B, and then later on, I wanted to move it over to Sysplex C, I could do that again, and I could do all that driving from Sysplex A system to ZOSMF primary. So sitting right here through my browser, I could deploy target software instance Y over to target, whoops, software instance Z, all doing it from the primary system that you can see here. So you can see that there's a lot of capability and a lot of power within ZOSMF software management to help you do deploy throughout your entire enterprise. Okay, so as before, it's gonna ask you some deployment objective questions. Where do you wanna deploy it to? Which Sysplex do you wanna deploy it to? Okay, and as I'd mentioned before, the old fashioned server pack that we had never supported that remote deployment. So this is an additional thing that we have now. Concerning the question that we also had in the chat, you know, global zone, what are you gonna do for your global zone? What's your objective? Do you wanna create a brand, brand new global zone? Or the person in the chat, Juan said, you know, I wanna connect it to an existing global zone. Can I do that? Absolutely, you can do that. We never could do that before in server pack. We'd always make you have a new global zone. But within ZOSMF software management, you can connect it to an existing global zone. And in fact, that's how a lot of customers actually have their processes set up today. So this fits even better into the process that they have today, because we will give you the target in the DLive zone and you hook it up to your existing global zone. But you got to tell us what that global zone is so we know it. Also, we have the question on the objective, do you want to replace a software instance that you already had out there? Or do you want to create a new one? And this is, again, another capability that we never had within server pack is that we never had the ability to replace something that was already out there. Okay, so keep that in mind. These are three capabilities that we can't do in server pack today. So getting back to that checklist with all the items down, let's look at the uh, objective item here. So the first objective is, you know, what about your global zone? Do you want a new one or do you want an existing? So one, back to your chat question, this is where you would say, I wanna use an existing global zone CSI, okay? So that's where you would pick. If you want a new global, you pick this one, totally up to you. I'll just pick new global zone for this example we have in the slides. And then here is if you want to replace a software instance and connect it to the existing instances global zone. Okay, so you can, this is just uh, using for software instance replacement, you'd pick that option. And here's the target system. Remember back to that topology picture. Where's your system? Is it you know, a local system here or is it remote system on the other side of the world? As long as you have the ZOSMF um, provided on those remote systems, let me show the picture again. These are remote systems. As long as these remote systems are known to this ZOSMF, we can communicate between the two ZOSMF systems in order to do the deployment for you. 
Okay, so tell us where you want to go to. Where are we going to do it? Are we going to do a local system? Or are we going to go somewhere else? If it's somewhere else, tell us where it is. Okay, so we're moving right through the checklist. And as you can see, the questions at the top of the checklist are really easy. Okay, the next one is check for missing sysmods. Now, oftentimes when people have their own homegrown deployment methods, they do not do this step. So we view this as an advantage to doing it within ZOSMAP software management. So what this step will do is it will make sure that the requisite and that the fix cats that you might need onto that target system are satisfied. And we also do regression checking to make sure, let's say if you had a PTF installed on a software instance in your target location and you did not have that PTF installed on the software instance that's the source, that when you go to send it to that location that you're aware that you might regress it because you don't have that PTF on. Same thing for user mods as well. So we're gonna check for regress, regressed uh, sysmods and we're also going to check for requisite and also fix cat PTFs that may be missing as well. Now you can see here that these are check boxes. You don't have to do this particular section if you don't want to, you can do one and not the other or you could not do both if you want. So just decide here what you wanna do when you go to the deployment of the software instance, if you wanna check for recs or if you wanna check for regressions. Okay, so moving right through, I'm gonna to move to the next section here, which is configure. And this is probably, I think, where I spend most of my time is in configure, because this is where you're going to tell specifically to ZOSMF software management exactly what you want that software instance to look like. Okay, so that's called configure the deployment. This is a lot like modify system layout that you'll see in server pack. So just like I would spend a lot of time in modify system layout, I probably will spend a lot of time here uh, within configure, but I don't have to spend a lot of time because I can do modeling after and we'll talk about that in a second. So once you get into the configure of the deployment, you then mo move into a smaller mini wizard underneath the larger steps of deployment that you can see here. So here on the left, you can see are the kind of mini wizard steps that you can see under deployment, uh, configure deployment. But remember, you're gonna be stepped through these very well. So don't worry about, you know, did you forget something? Did you miss something? Because all of these are going to be handled and helped for you. So moving down on that little mini wizard, we're gonna ask you about DLibs. Now, a lot of times customers said, if I'm going to take a software instance and deploy it out to my production center, I never take the DLibs with me. Don't make me take the DLibs. Okay, fine. We won't make you uh, take the DLibs. We'll give you the CSI. You have to take the CSI with the um, software instance because we wanna know what's out there. And that hooks up when we do reports later on. So we do need at least the CSI out there. But if you don't wanna take the DLibs, that's okay. That's your option. However, if I'm installing a product for a very first time and you know it's come pre-installed with the target DLibs you know, in the global zones, everything there, if I'm gonna lay down that very product for the very first time, you're gonna to wanna to take the DLibs, okay? So this is equivalent in a server pack to taking the DLibs. So if you're doing a first product install, do you want the DLibs? Yeah, you want the DLibs because you've gotta be able to do full maintenance on that. So that was an easy question. Let's move to the next one. So the next one is modeling. This is just like in server pack, how you would create your new server pack configurations based on your prior server packs configuration. But in ZOSMF, it's called modeling. What do you wanna model this target software instance after? Do you wanna model it after a software instance that you've already got on your system already? So let's say I'm installing, I don't know, I'm gonna make up things like, let's say I have a Kix, um, I don't know what a Kix recent release is, 5.4. I have a Kix 5.4 uh, software instance already defined on my system. And I'm installing a Kix, uh, 5.5 five software instance. Well, do I want to model 5.5 five after 5.4? Yeah, I probably do because there's probably going to be a lot of similarities. So what I would do in this particular option is I would say, okay, I want to model after an existing software instance. And then you just point it to us. And then we align everything and we try to make it as similar to the one that you pointed us to or not. And that saves you a lot of time. OK, because if you have a lot of, you know, unique uh, customizations or, uh, you know, commonality naming conventions that you have, we'll follow that for you and, and change that for you automatically. OK, if you don't want to model after an existing one because it's the very first time you've ever got this product, fine. 
um, you can just model it after the source. The source is just when it was created from the vendor, which is fine. No problem. You can still change everything that you want. Okay. So the model after capability is going to be a really good friend if you're upgrading uh, software level. Okay. So you've answered the question about modeling after the next question is zones. What do you want to name your zones? Now, a lot of people, especially, you know, Juan that had a global zone and he had probably a very specific naming convention for his targets in DLibs. This is where you can tell us what do you want to call your target in the DLib zone? Very simple to do. Enter the uh, values that you can see here and software management will verify that they're unique. So if you're putting it into an existing global zone and that existing global zone has a hundred target zones, you got to make sure that the ones that you're newly going to add are going to be unique. So we'll make sure that they're unique. This is just like in server pack when you were underneath the zone option and you had to put in the zone names. Okay, very easy. Okay, the next one is kind of the bigger one now. Now we're going to get into the configuration of the data sets. Okay, so this is where you're going to give us the name. You're going to say where to put it. You're going to say if it wants to be SMS managed. Um, all of this kind of information that you can see here. So my advice on this particular thing is to do the configuration changes in clumps. So you can use filtering on this panel for the target data set name, or you can filter it on the, the target volume. You can filter it on the data set type that it is. And once you've got all the data sets kind of together, you can go underneath the actions pull down, which I didn't show here, but I think I have it in your background. You go underneath the actions pull down and it will be modify. You go into the modify and then you can change on mass, the high level qualifier, the volume name, the SMS class, anything like that. You can just clump them all together and do the changes on one fell swoop. So again, this is like modify system layout. And this is like the change command, the CH command that you might've seen in server pack but now you're just doing it all visually with the filters that are at the top of the column and the action pull downs on uh, the data set name that you wanna change. Okay, and I did have in, uh, hidden in the slide some of the more details on that, but I just wanna make sure I could get through all of the deployment activity in this presentation. Okay, the next one is catalogs. So catalogs is, uh, you know, where do you want these data sets cataloged? <laughs> or if you, if you have to have them cataloged, right? Uh, some data sets you don't have to have cataloged. And if you don't want to have those data sets cataloged, uh, PDSs or PDSEs, fine. You don't want to have them cataloged, don't have them cataloged. Just tell us that you don't want them cataloged. Um, but VSAM data sets and SMS managed data sets are going to need to be cataloged. So we need to understand the catalog structure. Um, you can tell us whether they're going into an existing catalog or whether you want to create a new user catalog. And of course, the dialog will handle uh, creation of the new user catalog. This in the server pack dialog is just like the alias option that you might have known before. So we have that capability here as well. All right, so the next option is volumes. So we want to look here about volume. We want to look at the space. How much is being allocated? Do you want to initialize the volume? Uh, do you want to indirectly catalog the data sets that are going to go to that volume? What is going to be the system symbol that you want to use if it's going to be indirectly cataloged? So this is where you would put that in this option. Let me just check up in the chat one more time. I think we have one chat message. Uh, question, is there a plan to include GSD distribution to install with, CER with ZUSMF? Um, I believe, and I may be mistaken, but I think GSD dis distribution is an internal IBM distribution to install with ZUSMF. So given that it's an internal IBM thing, I, I'm not sure what their plans are to do it. Uh, really, I kind of wanted to focus, focus more on the client, um, how IBM ships to clients. GSD distribution could, of course, do this if they wanted to. I just don't know if there are any plans that they would have it. So sorry about that one, Jose. So I don't know about any plans. They could do it if they want. And in fact, I would recommend it because it's it makes it pretty easy to do. OK, so we just finished up with the volume. Whoops. Oh, and I did show a little bit of details about the volume. Um, not in the background. So here's the volume name. I can say whether I want to initialize it. Do I want things cataloged directly or indirectly? Here's the uh, system symbol that I want to use. Um, plan threshold, don't allow data sets to go over this amount of space on the volume because I want to make sure I have a little bit of growth on the volume. 
it'll tell you, you know, how much space you had before and how much space you had after. So this is the same kind of information that you would get in the volume option that you would have within DFSMS, or sorry, within Server Pack as well. Okay, so you can see a lot of the information in Server Pack is also in ZOSMF Software Management. Um, it's maybe guided a little bit better, it's presented a little bit easier, and a lot of times there's more checking going on behind the scenes for it too. Okay, Unix file system mount points. So if you had a file system, uh, a ZFS within your software instance, you would have to indicate to us where you wanted that mounted on the target system. So you just specify that here, easy enough to do, okay? So we are through the configuration. So remember within, you get in the, within the configuration, you get that other smaller little mini wizard that comes down and then that smaller mini win, winner, uh, wizard goes into the data set and the volume and the mount points and the uh, cats information that you can see there as well. Okay, let me go briefly back to the chat. See if there's another message on the chat. Okay, so Sean is asking, we, have a, we are a heavy user of Chorus Software Management manager and have been experiencing this migration since about 2013-ish. Is there a complete list of all the vendors currently providing program product support for the ZOSMF portable software instances? That is an excellent question, Sean. Um, I am only allowed to tell you what uh, vendors have announced support for that. And I do know that Phoenix Software International has already delivered on that. And I do know that we have Computer Associates, which is Broadcom now, they have announced their intention. I don't know how much they have delivered on that, but I do know that they have an intention to do it. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up too much on that one. And also I know that BMC has also announced their support of it as well. So it's hard um, to have a consolidated list of this. I've been trying to get this over time, but. Uh, things move very quickly within some of these deliverables. So I don't exactly know exactly a consolidated list for it. I wish I did. But I do know that Phoenix Software International has already delivered on it. And in fact, they, they beat IBM to the punch. They were the first one to deliver a portable software instance. So kudos to them. Um, in Broadcom, you mentioned Chorus Software Manager. Broadcom has also embraced this format as well. So go ahead, Jaffe. Yeah, you bet. He, he was good. He was more nimble than we were in IBM. So go ahead, Jaffe. All righty. So let's go back to the, the slides now. Okay. So after I have, uh, you know, done all the configuration, I tell you what I like. I like this next option, which is the ability to view the deployment summary. Because at this point in time, I have now done all of my work to lay it down. I've got everything laid what I want. I know where the global zone is. I know what systems I'm sending it to. I know exactly what's gonna happen in this portable software instance when I create a software instance from it. But I really like here because this is the sanity check portion of the checklist. This is where I can click on each one of these tabs going across the top and I can see exactly what I've said to do and make sure that it's exactly happening. Now, this portable software instance installation method is really intended for and, and can be used often by a less skilled person that is not familiar with installing ZOS platform software stuff. So as you can see up to now, it's been very easy to do this, but there have been some questions um, that might be a little harder for an early tenure person that is installing software on ZOS to know, such like, did I get the data set names right? Did I put it on the right volume? Um, am I really going to deploy it to the, the right system, right? So a, a little bit of sanity check. Maybe that person might want to go to a team leader or another coworker to say, yeah, you know, can you give me a sanity check? This is what I've just gone through in software management. Can you just verify that everything's okay? Did I get the right SMS storage class? Everything. So on this portion of ZOSMF, you can go through and have, you know, another set of eyes you know, look through, okay, these are the data sets I'm going to delete if I'm going to replace something. These are the ones I'm going to add on. These are the ones I'm going to replace if it's, you know, an, uh, replacing an, exist, an existing instance. This is how it's going to be cataloged. It's going to this target system. This is, uh, I'm going to have a new global zone. All these options are right. And so I spend a little bit of time just clicking through here to make sure that the sanity check as well. I really like this portion because once you get um, this portion done, it's downhill from here. 
So if you need to go back and change anything, a data set name, an S a storage class, a volume, you know, global options, target zone names, anything you want, um, this would be the point to see where you could, uh, it's gonna happen and you can go back and change things if you want. Alrighty, so I got a lot of work done, right? I've got everything all held in there that I need to do. I'm gonna submit the jobs. So I see one more question on the chat. Let me just peek over there. Will the product allow me to allocate linkless data sets with one extent? That is an excellent question, Juan. When we ship the linkless data sets from IBM, we will put them in one extent. We will do that today. If you see that we are not putting linkless data sets in one extent today, please let us know because that is not what our internal algorithms we call them the right size algorithms. Those right size algorithms might be not doing that today and that would be a problem. So I haven't noticed that in any of the server packs that I've installed because these algorithms have been working correctly. But if you see that there is a linkless data set that is not in one extent, please let us know that is a problem and a defect, we'd have to fix that. Okay, so the comment was he sees it in IBM vendor products. Um, I. Any IBM products that we ship really should be within that one extent. So let us know if we have a problem with that. All of the products that we ship in server pack should be going through that right size algorithm. Okay, and, I, and I've seen that. And we have enough space in that right size algorithm to give you even more space. Question from Stuart is, will it be possible to install SMPE user mods through ZUSMF? Great question, Stuart. That is the next session that we're gonna talk about. Very, very good question. We'll have that coming up in just a little bit. Okay, so I hope I see Stuart at the next session. All right, so remember where we are now. We've got everything all laid down. We've customized everything. We might have even modeled it after an existing software instance we had, meaning that I could get through that, uh, the configuration of the data sets very quickly because I'm just modeling it after one I already have. So here we are, you have the submitted jobs. Okay, now this is in server pack. You know that you have a lot of batch jobs in server pack, but look here, we don't have a lot of batch jobs in ZOSMF because we can uh, consolidate them down a lot easier than we could in server pack with COSMF. So depending on what options you're using on all of that other stuff that we just finished answering, uh, you'll have a couple of different jobs. In this particular software instance deploy, portable software instance deploy, I only had three jobs, okay? So the fewest I've seen is three, and then I think the maximum I've seen is maybe like five or six or something like that. It's not like the 40 that we had for server pack. So in this particular scenario here, uh, the first one is gonna do the unzipping of the data set from the portable software instance. The second step is gonna rename the data sets to what I wanted, and it's going to get them cataloged correctly. And then the third one is going to update the DDDEFs in the CSI to make sure that they're pointing to them accurately. So in the simplest of an, uh, deployments, three jobs is what you might see. But again, you might see a couple of more, a couple of more jobs. Okay, so I run those jobs, the jobs look good, and now what do I do? Well, now I have to configure my software and I have to verify the installation of it. We call the verify stuff, IVPs, installation verification procedures. We have that all in workflows now. So this is where I'm gonna talk specifically about server pack. I'm not sure how vendors in their portable software instance will do it. We've shared this, uh, what we're doing in server pack with other vendors, they may or may not do it this way. But if you're going to get an IBM server pack within the portable software instance format, you're gonna get three workflows. Okay, so the three workflows, the first one is called your order, and it is a very simple workflow. It pretty much says, you know, this is your order. This is the products that you had in your order. This is the service level of those products that you had in that order. And here is, you know, the IBM copyright that goes with it. Wow, exciting stuff, okay? There's nothing really to do in that your order, but just pretty much poke through it and look at it, and you can see information like that. So there's no really work being done in that one, it's just information about your order. So that's one of the three. Okay, the second one we have is the post deploy workflow and that is where the configuration is done. So that is the configuration work that you will do in a workflow from your driving system onto your target system. So this would be things like, you know, eventually when we get a ZOS server pack, not yet, but when we get one, a perfect example might be writing IPL text. 
simplest thing in the world. It will be a step in the ZOS post-deploy workflow when we have it uh, to write IPL text out. Uh, for kicks and DB2 and IMS, you know, I'm not much of a subsystem person. You guys probably do that a lot more than I do, but you would see um, specific configuration setup work that you would need to do for those subsystems that you have. Okay, and then the very last workflow we have is called the verification workflow. And what that is, is that is a series of steps that are the IVPs for that software that you ordered and that was packaged for you. So the verification workflow needs to be run on the target system because that's where you're doing the verification from. Okay, so let me just pause here for a second. Look again up at chat. Um, Elizabeth asks, is the output from the jobs are stored in ZOSMF in some way? I'd like to keep those for future reference. Yes, so all of the output from the ZOSMF workflow steps can be stored. It's the information is stored within workflow. But as you know, when you create or launch a workflow, you can specify a unique file system location where you also want to keep the output of the workflow. That would be your own personal copy of it, if you'd like. And also all of the batch jobs are still sitting on the spool too. So if you also wanted to go look at them from the spool or have some automation from the spool that would um, you know, archive things that are on the spool, they would also be on the spool. So you can look at them from you know, the workflows itself, you can look at them from your own personal copy, or you can also have them on the spool, but they are all saved. Uh, another question from Sean, IVP for the product itself or for the validation of the software instance? The IVP or the verify workflow is the IVP of the product itself, okay? So this would be, um, again, I'm gonna give you a ZOS example because that's the one I'm most familiar with. So like, uh, let's say an IVP for ZOS would be that you could, um, you know, uh, compile a C, C++ job because we ship the compiler within ZOS. So it might be a sample job just to make sure that you can invoke the compiler fine and that the output has a return code of zero. Okay, so it's the product IVP. Uh, the validation of the software instance deployment itself is done within ZOSMF itself because we will continue and verify and check return codes and make everything uh, self-verified within the interface itself. So you don't have to do IVP on something that you've done for the deployment because we, we're already managing that ourselves today. All right, so quickly about the workflows. I've got eight minutes left. So uh, the three workflows I told you, the your order workflow is not that interesting. You can go browse it and you know it's there for your reference mostly. Uh, the configuration one is for the configuration stuff. And then the um, verify is the IVPs that you have on the target system that you run. So here's just a little snippet of a very easy sample workflow. Um, this might be an example of the configuration workflow where we move from the software management tab. This is where I wanted to show it. And when you launch from software management to go into that first workflow, it'll open up the workflow window for you and it will create the new workflow so that you have it there so that you can start on the first step. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of mention here, this is where you're gonna have a little bit of a context switch, but the context switch is managed by software management itself and it'll guide you through that. So then you would do workflows. If you go back to software management, it even keeps track of how much you have completed of that workflow. So in this example here, I think we had one step. So it was, you know, 100% complete after the one step was done. But let's say I had 10 steps within that configuration workflow, and I'd only done two of them. If I went back to the software management plugin, and I looked at that interface, I would see 20% complete because I'd only done two steps within the workflow. So there's a lot of uh, communication between the workflow and software management so that it can be managing how much uh, you've done within the configuration and the IVP work as well. Okay, so let's say you've done the workflow. You did the configuration, great. Um, you activated the software, let's say, and you ran the installation verification of the products that you had in your order. Everything looks good, perfect, great. What do you do now? Well, you do something that we call complete the deployment because what you have done at this point is you've taken the portable software instance and you've made it just a software instance, but we wanna know the name of that software instance. So this is where you give it the name. So now this is what makes that group of data sets that you've laid down, 
you now get that instance name, and this is where you do that. It's the very last step. Target software instance name, give it a beautiful description. I am a fan of putting the service level in the description. That is my personal advice, uh, because sometimes if you're just looking at software instances, you can't tell what service level it is. So I like to put that in the description. And then, you know what? You're good. Um, the portable software instance is going to remain on your software management. You'll still have that. If you want to go remove that, you can. Let's say it was a very large order, or now that you've got it deployed, you really don't want to keep it anymore uh, within your file system. You can go delete that if you want. Okay, we're not going to delete it. You delete it if you want. You decide when you're going to get rid of your portable software instance once you have completed the deployment into a software instance. Okay. So now you're all done. So what do I need to do this? I, I love this, Marna. I've seen this. I'm ready to go. You know, I know I got vendors out there delivering on this. Um, you know, IBM's already delivering on this for Kix, DB2, and IMS. Okay, I keep repeating that because it seems all the time I get the question a million times a day. Um, is ZOS 2.4 delivered in a portable software instance? And the answer is no, it is not. Okay, only Kix, DB2, and IMS today as of this date. Okay, and today is November 5th. Okay, so I have three ways I can, you know, go order software in, in IBM on Shop Z for this portable software instance method. How do I do this? On Shop Z, look at the right hand side of this chart. On Shop Z, once you've ordered your products, all the lovely products you want, it's going to ask you, how do you want to install your package? And the first drop down option is the best. It's going to be ZOSMF software management. So I would encourage you to pick this top option. If you don't have ZOSMF on your system, you don't feel comfortable doing what I just explained, which is very easy to do. And there's helps and there's lots of things you can do. Um, I think it's pretty easy to do. You, you guys, I think, can do it. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, though, you can go back to the old ISPF custom pack installation dialog, and that is this lower option here. So today you have the choice. Will you always have the choice? Looking out on the roadmap in the crystal ball, you are not always going to have two choices here. Okay, so that is another reason why I strongly encourage you to learn this process today. Make sure that your system has software management and workflows set up correctly today, that you have the authority to use it well, that everybody on your team knows how to do it, that you have the PTFs that are required, which is on the left right here. These are the PTFs you need to do what I just described in this presentation. You have these PTFs installed. Please go today and order a Kix, IMS, DB2, whatever server pack you want. If you even already have the products, I don't care. Please just order it, take the new format, throw the product away if you want, but the experience will be that you know how to do it, that you've got over this, I don't think it's a big learning curve. I think you can do it. If you've done a server pack, you can do this before, and it's very guided even if you've never done a server pack. So please go and order that today. If you don't, you know, if you're not a customer for DB2 Kicks or IMS, that's even totally fine too. We have a test package on this website that you can see here. And this test site is the smallest portable software instance in the world. It has a workflow and it has a file system. So you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Go download the test package that you see at this website. And then you can install it yourself on your own system after you have these PTFs installed. Okay. So that is my uh, advice at this particular point in time. Uh, let me go to the chat real quick again. Can you confirm? If the migration actions for moving ZOSMF from 2.2 to 2.4 described in the migration guide or in a separate ZOSMF document, I can confirm that the upgrade steps, that's, remember that's the new term we have, sorry about that, Stuart, I'm going to use the new terminology, but I'll use the old one too. The upgrade actions for ZOSMF or what we call them now is the, or we did call them the migration actions from 2.2 to 2.4 for ZOSMF are completely documented in the ZOS 2.4 upgrade workflow. Now remember the ZOS 2.4 upgrade workflow replaces the migration book and it's all consolidated together. So we have ZOSMF and BCP and RACF and JES2 and everybody else is in there too. It's in the ZOS 2.4 upgrade workflow and ZOSMF is in there. I'm gonna to cut to the chase. The difference between 2.3 and 2.4 for ZOSMF is zero, but you've got to go from 2.2 to 2.4. That means in 2.3 you have uh, auto start 
email me later if you want to talk about that one. Uh, Steve says, how do I check the status of a PTF across the enterprise? I think that was stated as one of the benefits of using it. It is absolutely one of the benefits. I'm going to get to it in just two minutes. Uh, another PTF supersedes another one, all the better. Okay, so let's talk about the extra stuff that you can do after the install. Okay, so I can do software update. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next session. Um, if I wanted to re-perform the workflows, I could do that. I could view, I could view the product data sets. And I think I have on here, I did I include a screenshot? It might be in your background. When you go into a software instance, there is the actions pull down here. And this one is for you, Steve. Under the actions pull down, you'll see an option for reports. And in the reports, you'll see the ability, I'm not sure what it's exactly called, query sysmod or something like that. So what you do is you select your software instance that you can see here, and then you do actions, pull down reports, and then move over to, there's about four or five reports there. One of them is end of service. Uh, one of them does a comparison of two software instances. Um, the other one is a query uh, sysmod status, and that's where you would do it right on the software instance panel, actions, pull down reports, and then pick which report you want. So that's where you get it. I don't think I put it in the presentation, but I think it might be in the hidden slides that I have. Okay, so let me see what time it is. I am one minute over, but this is the last slide. So how can you learn about this? Look at this presentation. I've gone through the slides pretty quickly. There is something called a content solution that we have. And that is uh, has that little trial package that you can go get and it will tell you what the PTFs you need installed are and it will guide you through that a little bit. If you have never done a workflow in your life and especially if you're gonna do the upgrade workflow for ZOS 2.4, watch this eight minute video. This will tell you everything about workflow. I've got a lot of basic questions about workflow and every one of the workflow basic questions can be answered if you watch this eight minute workflow. The upgrade workflow, you can go get that from here. Again, Phoenix Software International, the wonderful Ed Jaffe, he did an entire webinar about how Phoenix Software International has delivered a portable software instance before we did. Wonderful, but it's a great webinar. I put the link for that here. You can go find it. And then there's some education modules. If you're a vendor and you want to package your own software instance in a portable software instance, you can use this link. Uh, if you want to, as, as a client, if you want to take one and receive it, you don't want to use this presentation. You don't want to use the content solution. There's a screenshot by screenshot by screenshot there on, as well. So I think um, you guys should be ready to install a portable software instant that comes from any vendor because it will all look the same. It's all packaged the same, it all installs the same. Okay, the only difference might be, you know, workflow content from a product or something like that. But what you have just seen for the steps means that if you can do it once, you can do it for any vendor. Okay, and that's really what I wanted to talk about in this session, get you familiar with it and then strongly encourage you go get a portable software instance. If you want from IBM, go get a Kix IMS or DB2 one try to install it, give us your feedback. If there's something that you need that you don't see, let us know. Because as I said, down the road, you know, we're not gonna have both options. We're not gonna support both an ISPF dialog and the ZOSMF um, uh, interface for installing a portable software instance. You know, that's, that's the way, you know, reality goes with the business today is that we don't support both for a long time. So please, please try it. All right, so please remember to submit your session feedback. This is session 5AP, and you can do it online there. And also, uh, please donate to the charity, the NHS Charities Together, great thing. And because this conference was free, I would hope that everybody could give just a little bit to this charity, that would be great. Thank you very much, Marna. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, speak, uh, speak in 30 minutes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see you guys back in 30 minutes for installing a SMP fix on top of a software instance. Thank okay, you. Thanks, guys. Thanks.